I want to talk about one of the possible ways you can set up your FileMaker solution to validate contact emails that exist within your FileMaker database. Now, having good valid emails is going to be an important business tool for your organization, but it's also going to be important to your email provider because your email providers are not going to want to see a lot of bogus email addresses being sent out from your FileMaker database or from your email services. In fact, if you attempt to send out a lot of bogus email addresses out of FileMaker, it may cause you to get a nasty note from your email provider. It depends upon the rules set up by your email provider, but I know that we've seen this before with Bluehost, which is a major online provider. At one point, we had too many bogus email addresses within our email database, and so we got a nasty note from them saying, hey, knock it off. So there are a number of different ways for you to validate your emails within your FileMaker database. Of course, if you have a website, one way to validate your emails is to actually email the client and then actually have them click a link in the email, and that link actually goes back through PHP into your FileMaker database and checks off and validates the fact that the email was proper and accurate because the user could never have clicked the link if they hadn't received the email back to their email application in the first place. Now, that's a very common process these days, but what if you have a bunch of email addresses already in your database? You need to look at interacting with an online service to validate that information. Now, recently, we've been playing with this online service called verifyemail.org. They're fairly inexpensive, and for the most part, they work pretty well. I wanted to show you how we set this up within one of our support databases here at RCC. Now, at a very simple level, I have my email field right here in my contacts date entry screen, and I can press this check button right here, and it's actually going to go out to this online service, and if it comes back positive as in verified, it'll put us a green check mark right here. It'll tell us the date it was verified. It'll give us this little message right here, and it also marks a hidden date field in the system. That way we know in the future, maybe in six months or so, we can go back and revalidate the email address again. Because as you know, people change email addresses all the time. So it's probably a good idea to have a periodic process where you go back and revalidate the addresses that are in your system. Now with some of these services, you're going to notice that not every email address can be validated. The way these online services do is they actually simulate sending an email to that person. And if it looks like the email is going to go through, they give you a thumbs up and say, hey, that's a great email. But a lot of the online mail services don't like to cooperate. Yahoo and Hotmail are two notoriously non-cooperative services. So whenever you get a service like that, you'll get an unverified email status, which means that the email could not be verified. Now in our database, we have quite a few emails that we need to go back and verify. So I wrote a process that verifies them in blocks of 20. Now there's some larger workflow issues here and reasons I did this really outside the scope of the video. But I decided that there'd be a periodic process that one of our automated robots would run, and about every five or 10 minutes, it would scoop up about 20 emails that needed to be validated, and it would validate it on its own. So one of our robots does this for us automatically. When it does it, it does this right here. Now, as you can see, some of these emails are coming back as non-verifiable. Now, that doesn't mean they're bad, it just means the mail service on the other end is not being overly cooperative. So the question is, how did we set all this up? Well, it's real simple. We pay an online service and we send to them a URL, which includes the email address that we're interested in checking. We use the new insert from URL into a text field. I can press this gear icon right here and it pops a popover menu. This email field right here is the field that we set into when we run the insert from URL. This is the actual text that comes back from that online service. From here, we have to run some script steps that parses this out. But the key piece that we're looking for here is email verify status. If email verify status is one, that means it did positively verify as being a valid email. So that's what all these green ones indicate. If I click over here and click here, I can see that we have a valid status here. So what I'm looking for is that on line four of this value list, the right character of line four is a one. 
And so that's how I validate that we have a green or valid email. Pretty straightforward. Now, if we have a zero, that could mean one of a couple different things. I can click over here and I can see that MX record does not exist. I set up our script to look for a number of different scenarios. Does not exist. User doesn't exist. A handful of common phrases that are used will be in here. And if it sees that, FileMaker knows that this is actually a failed condition. Now, the yellow conditions where it's unable to verify will also have the zero condition too. So FileMaker has to be able to make a determination here. See here we have a verify status of zero as well. But in this case, the domain exists, but the client host was rejected. That means that our online service that we're using here, this verifyemail.org, was not allowed to actually communicate and talk to this mail service properly. So it's not our fault. It's just a communication issue where this client's mail server doesn't actually trust verifyemail.org. So let me walk you through our script here. So my email verification script is fairly simple. I define those fields in my database. And then I go over here and I run the insert from URL command. And I'm going to run this HTTP command right here. I'm going to say specify. I can hit specify here. You'll have to put your own username and password in here because you'll have to pay for that service yourself. But then at the end, all you have to actually do is put the email that you're interested in. Now, what happens is the system doesn't come back and tell you exactly what you need to know. You have to write this additional scripting in here, which actually parses out the results. And that's what we've done here. We parsed out to make sure the system is operational, which is what we did here. And then we come down here to determine if the actual verification status is zero. If the verification status is zero, we're trying to determine if it's unverifiable or if it's bad. Now, what we do is we're looking for all these conditions here. Does not exist. No such user. The email account you tried is disabled. Recipient not found. Unknown user. All these types of things. If I find a new situation, I'll put it in here. Now, you could search for an error 550, but I found situations where you'll get 550, but it's actually not an error. It's actually unverifiable. So for those of you who think you're really sharp and you're just going to put the email error number in here, that's not a concrete fix either. So once again, you have to be a little clever about this and write your own routine here. So then you have two situations. You have either it failed or it's simply unverifiable. So this is the yellow condition down here. And this is the red condition right here. Up here, this is the green condition right here. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of how this works. The magic here is simply understanding that you have to insert from URL. Basically, it takes a web URL and it sticks the results in a text field. Then you have to parse it apart and then come down here and make decisions based upon that. If you happen to decide to use verifyemail.org, feel free to email me and I'll be happy to share this script with you so you don't have to completely rewrite your own script from scratch.